Chapter 26 It wasn't fucking possible. I had her death certificate, and although I hadn't been able to physically see her body because of my worsening condition, her family had seen it. They buried it. I had been to the grave. The idea of some conspiracy involving faking her own death, it was absurd. And yet, that was Gertie looking back at me under the bandshell in Lake Stevenson Park. And when she smiled, every nagging doubt and skeptical thought evaporated. It didn't matter how absurd the concept was, that was Gertie. I wanted to believe. I had to believe. When she spoke, reality twisted again. Her voice sounded strange. I heard my wife, the tone of her voice, that unmistakable lilt and tenor, but something was off. At first, I was sure my ears were playing tricks on me, somehow filtering and translating the sound into what I expected to hear, but then the lower octave couldn't be ignored. I squinted, focused, and tried to listen. Something familiar? She asked. She waved a hand across her face, and I followed the motion with a hawkish gaze. The hand was all wrong. Bigger than Gertie's. I was distantly aware of the dark green sleeve the hand was sticking out of. I knew it was an important detail, but I couldn't process why. I rubbed my hand across my mouth. Why was it getting so hard to breathe? You're not looking so good there, Abraham, Gertie said. She turned to the crowd, who was watching with some kind of... Reverence? It's them, isn't it? Dockside was one thing. Dockside was bad. But this? This is a whole new level in the Abraham Owens emotional shit show, isn't it? My head was reeling. Gertie didn't talk like that. Why was Gertie talking like that? And Dockside? What the hell did she mean by Dockside? Honestly, when it was explained that the biggest, baddest, toughest guy in the city was a recluse and refused to be around people because of feelings, Gertie said, slowly circling me, her voice amplified by the microphone she held in her hand. Well, I just couldn't believe that. It didn't seem possible. And don't get me wrong, I have seen some shit in this city. But Abraham Owens, brought to his knees and crippled by feelings? Gertie chuckled at the audience. He sounds like a shitty superhero who gets killed off at the beginning of the comic book. His only purpose to inspire a real hero. I felt myself wavering, and then I stumbled again. None of this made any goddamn sense. And it seemed clear now that somehow, some way, what was left of my barely functioning brain was now simply betraying me. I'm not gonna lie to you, Abraham. Gertie continued. You're here for two reasons. The first is because you have a reputation in this city. Like I said, people think you are the biggest and baddest there is. Gertie chuckled. Although I'm pretty sure your brother might have something to say about that. Malachi, my brother. Again, I felt like there was something critically important right in front of my eyes, but I couldn't see it. You're here because you are Abraham Owens, Gertie said, and I need my boys to see that absolutely nothing will stand against us. Not you, not the police, not even the good people of St. Charles. When the sons of the golden future march through this city, there will be no opposition, no defiance. Gertie stopped and stood in front of me, studying my face. You're here because of that big, bad, tough guy reputation, Abraham. You're here because of that simple maxim. Find the biggest brute in the yard and beat the living shit out of him. But the empathy? Jesus Christ, I can see it all over your face. It's killing you. It's actually killing you, isn't it? Big, bad Abraham Owens with all his muscles, all his strength. And I could lay you out with a single punch right now, couldn't I? 
Just one person. Just one punch. Somehow it made sense that at the end of it all, it would be Gertie. She spun on her heel, and the hood of her dark green coat flapped in my face. She addressed the crowd. What say you? Their new favorite chant again. Fuck, Fuck him up! up. Fuck, Fuck him up. up! I worked my jaw and struggled to find my voice. <laughs> Gertie, please. Gertie spun again, my broken brain processing everything in a blur. A fist whipped out and connected with the side of my face, sending a cascade of fireworks exploding across my vision. I spun and collapsed to the stage, blood dripping as darkness crept around the edges of my swimming vision. Hello, darkness. Hello, ground. My dear old friends. You don't get to say that name. Not anymore. Gertie hissed, her voice something demonic. You can't. Don't you dare say her name. Everything had gone numb and distant, but the punch and the pain that followed succeeded at pushing back the crippling pull for just an instant. Long enough for me to process a single thought. What the actual fuck? I coughed and managed to roll onto my back. Gertie stood over me, fished a hand into her coat pocket, and pulled something out. I said you were here for two reasons, she said, tossing the object down to me. I'd spell out the second one, but I'm sure even a useless meathead like you can finish putting it all together. I pawed at the object on my chest and grasped it in my fingers. My lizard brain knew what it was before I lifted it into view and stared at it stupidly. It was a money clip, complete with a wad of cash. My cash, because it was my money clip. The one Gertie gave me all those years ago. The one stolen by the asshole who sucker punched me and beat the shit out of me at Dockside. It was why I agreed to take Beckett's job. Someone stole my money, and I needed more. I was desperate for more, just like he knew I'd be. And he knew I'd see through Corey's deception, which is why they manipulated Beckett in the first place. Corey was the line, Beckett the bait, and I was the thousand-pound marlin to shit for brains to avoid the hook. No, that wasn't Gertie standing over me. And that hadn't been Gertie's face I had seen in the crowd at Dockside. Fuck. Of course not. Gertie was dead. Always had been. The face I had glimpsed at Dockside, and the face staring down at me now, was indeed familiar. It looked similar to Gertie's more than enough to confuse my dried out and crumbling Plato brains, but it wasn't Gertie. It was her brother. I had never met or seen a photo of him. She had only mentioned him in passing early on, but while my brain had failed me, my gut assured me it couldn't be anyone else. This was her brother. Peter.